ナモアミダブッナモアミダブッナモアミダブッナマンダうじょうみだよらいみうどうよう We are gathered here today in the compassionate light of Amida Buddha to observe our Eight Haikyo memorial service. We are the link between the past, present, and future. Our presence here today is the result of the countless efforts of people who share Shinran's teaching. We join that effort to preserve and perpetuate. The teachings, chanting, and service into the future. Please join me in reciting the Nembutsu in gratitude. Namo Amida Buts, Namo Amida Buts, Namo Amida Buts, Namandals, Namandals, Namandals. Our guest speaker today for our A Taikyo service is Reverend. Koho Takata. He is the resident minister of the West LA Buddhist Temple, as he was recently assigned there. He went there after spending about seven years at the LA Nishi Betsuin. Reverend Takata was born and raised in Toyama, Japan. He is the 19th generation minister of the Jokoji Temple. He graduated Ryukoku University in Kyoto in 1993. As a Kai Kyoshi, he began his ministry at the Hopa Honganji Hawaii Betsuin in 1995. He also served at the Kapa'a Honganji Temple in Kauai from 1998 to 2005. He then served as the executive assistant to the bishop from 2005 to 2011. He then came to the mainland and served the BCA. First at the Arizona Buddhist Temple from 2011 to 2013, and then he served at the LA Betsuin from 2013 to 2020. This last August, I know that he enjoys surfing at his, at his leisure. We are fortunate that he will be giving a Dharma talk in both English and in Japanese. Reverend Takata.
ジブリジョニガショー、イティザセンオブシナンショーニン、The ocean of birth and death of painful existence has no bound. Only by the ship of Amida's universal bow can we, who have long been drawn in, unfailingly be brought across it. Namo Amida Buts, Nam Manda Buts, Nam Manda. Good morning, everyone. How are you this morning? I hope all of you stay safe and well. Thank you very much for attending the Eitai Kyo service today. I'd like to extend my sincere appreciation to Akahoshi Sensei and the entire Sangha members of the San Diego Buddhist Temple for inviting me to your Eitai Kyo. Service today. As you know, the A Taikyo service is a way to remember our Sangha members who h a s passed away. And this morning, we welcome the opportunity to express our gratitude to them. And at the same time, we rededicate ourselves to further. Listen to the teaching of the Buddha through this precious opportunity given by Sangha members who h a s returned to the Amida Buddha's parent upon their death. And this morning, I'd like to share the Buddha Dharma through my own past experiences. In our Buddhist tradition, we often observe. Memorial service. And we have short ski monthly memorial service, the Nenki Hoyo yearly memorial service, Ososhiki funeral service, and so forth. Now, it is often misunderstood that a memorial service is held for the deceased person. for His or her peaceful repose after the death and dying. However, Shinran Shonin teaches us that the deceased person, already born into the Amida Buddha's p a r e n t and they became Buddha when he or she ended their life. Amida Buddha standing in the altar. It's representing Shakamuni Buddha and all of our loved ones who ended their lives in this world. And they are now returning to this world as a Buddha of infinite wisdom and compassion to guide all of us who are still suffering in this world to attain the perfect peace. They realize upon their death. If a deceased person already became a Buddha, enlightened one, who are the ones suffering in this life and need guidance to live more profound and fulfilled lives? It is us. We are the ones. Who are always wandering and suffering in this world and worried by our loved ones who already became a Buddha. This is the reason why Buddha and our loved ones give us the precious opportunity for us to listen to their Dharma messages by observing. Memorial service so that memorial service is held mainly for us who are still alive and not for the deceased person. Unlike other Buddhist schools, this is a very unique tradition for us, Jodo Shinshu Buddhists, to reflect upon our own. Life and death, and discover the meaning 
of our lives through the memorial service, the opportunity given by our loved ones. And this morning, I'd like to share with you a famous Buddhist story. After Gautama Siddhartha attained enlightenment and became Shakyamuni Buddha, the Buddha started sharing the Dharma to hundreds of thousands of people for 45 years. And one day, a person approached the Buddha asking, what will happen after I die? What will happen after I die? What was my form before my birth? Answer these questions and I'll become your disciple. The Buddha intentionally didn't reply anything to him. So this person often visited Shakyamuni Buddha and kept asking him the same questions over and over. Then Shakyamuni Buddha finally replied to him in this way. A traveler was walking in the mountain and this traveler was mistakenly shot by a hunter with a poison arrow. This hunter immediately took this traveler to a doctor and the doctor immediately tried to remove the poison from him. However, this traveler refused any help from the doctor and demanded the doctor answering all of his questions before removing the poison arrow. What is your name, doctor? How old you are? How many years you have experience with your occupation? Who shot the arrow? What is made of this arrow? What is the poison? Then Shakyamuni Buddha asked this person, what's happened if this traveler keeps refusing the doctor to remove the poison until replying to all of his questions? Then the person replied to the Buddha, this traveler is foolish. He'll surely die with these questions still unanswered. What he needs to do is to remove the poison arrow as soon as possible. What do you think about this story? We are all this traveler walking the path of the Nimbus as a person replied to the Buddha, we are all foolish. We are called Bakatare. Baka means foolish. Tare means overflowing. Bakatare. Our selfish and foolish nature is overflowing like this traveler who keeps pursuing what we want to know and refusing a doctor's aid to solve the matter of our own death and dying. My overseas ministry began in Hawaii in 1995, and I transferred my ministry from Hawaii to US mainland. And my first assignment in BCA was Arizona Buddhist Temple located in Phoenix. After my assignment to Nishi, the Los Angeles between, I had some opportunities to go back to Arizona. And one of the big, big occasions was to attend their 80th anniversary. After the 
commemoration service on the luncheon. I was about to leave Arizona for returning to Los Angeles. I recall that a member, Kazuko-san, who always took care of my family, came to me and told me that she has a birthday party for her daughter that night. So she would be visiting her daughter's home for dinner. On the night when I drove back to Los Angeles from Arizona, I received an email from a minister's assistant of Arizona Buddhist Temple informing me that Kazuko-san's son passed away. Kazuko-san visited her daughter's home for a birthday dinner, and she was waiting for her son also joining in the dinner. However, he didn't show up for dinner. So she called many times to her son's cellular phone, but he never answered. Then she visited her son's home to see what he was doing. She rang the doorbell many, many times, but he never answered. She called her son from the outside of the home, but he never answered. And finally, she broke one of the windows and entered his home. Then she found her son sitting on the sofa, but he was already very cold. He was passing on the sofa. He was 47 years old. The family still don't know when he passed away and what the cause of his. I believe that especially unexpected death and dying is a very painful experience for the family, especially during this COVID-19 pandemic. Many people are experiencing difficulty to accept the death and dying of their loved ones. Intellectually, we all know that those who are born in this life will meet the death someday. We all know what means impermanence. However, it is very difficult to accept the truth if it happens to our own lives. In my ministry for over 30 years, I encountered countless deaths and dying and witnessed many, many remaining family members who were suffering, especially with their attachments to the physical form of their loved ones. However, as Shakyamuni Buddha teaches us that all things in this world, including our life and death, are constantly changing, everything is empty and temporary, there is no permanent self. However, if we do not recognize and cling to the eternal form, then we will live a life of great pain and suffering. So Shakyamuni Buddha taught us the attainment of non-self or non-ego as a way to eliminate or end our suffering by following the Eightfold Path. However, such a high goal, I don't think I can achieve in my life. I always cling to myself and live with full of ego in my daily life. After Shinran Shonin received his ordination, he went to Mount Hiei and spent for 20 years for achieving such a high goal, Shakyamuni Buddha realized. However, Shinran Shonin couldn't realize it. He gave up and decided to descend Mount Hiei and finally encountered the Nembu's teaching to liberate himself from the matter of the afterlife. Respectfully, receiving the truth and reality Shakyamuni Buddha revealed in his Four Noble Truths, Shinran Shoni accepted all sufferings we have to experience in our life, such as aging, illness, and dying. 
instead of avoiding our suffering, Shinran Shoni appreciated life and death as just a natural condition and process of life and honestly and sincerely confronted death and dying and deeply reflected upon life itself. The Shinran Shoni solved the matter of death and dying by entrusting himself to Amida Buddha's prime over. Moreover, when Shinran Shonin's disciple, Yuyen, asked Shinran Shonin about the difficulty of facing death and dying, Shinran Shonin responded, Though we feel reluctant to part from this world, at the moment our karmic bonds to this Saha world run out, and helplessly we die. We shall go to that run. Amida Buddha pities, especially the person who has no thought of wanting to go to the pure land quickly. Reflecting on this, we feel the great vow of great compassion to be all the more truthworthy and realize that our birth in the Pyramid is settled. In other words, at the very moment of our death, we will attain birth in the Pyramid and become a Buddha at the moment of our death by infinite wisdom and compassion of the Buddha. And because the question of death and dying is settled, the person of the Nimbus can live a life free of doubt and fear. The eighth spiritual leader of Honganji, Renyo Shonin, repeatedly reminds us of Gosho no Ichidaiji, which means the essential matter of the afterlife. He reminds us that we should live in awareness of this as we contemplate our own end of life we begin to discover the meaning of this life given by our loved ones. Thus, Renya Shoni admonished us that there is no tomorrow in the Buddha Dharma and encouraged us to listen to the Buddha Dharma to solve our life in this, at this present moment. We all have the experience to lose our loved ones. I lost my Ojichan, my Obachan, my teachers, friends, and so forth. They became a true and real life upon their death and manifest themselves as a compassionate working of the Buddha Namo Amidabuts, and their calling voice, Namo Amidabuts, is constantly reaching to me. And my awakening to the working of boundless wisdom and compassion makes me to realize that I am a person who always led by my ignorance, and yet I have been already encompassed by the perfection of the true reality, Namo Amidabutsu. I strongly believe that the most grateful teaching of Shinran Shoni is that those who passed away return to this world of suffering as Buddha of infinite wisdom and compassion for guiding those who remain and suffer with their ignorant nature in this world to the true and real home called Puran. It is not an end when they passed away. My loved ones keep living as a Buddha of infinite light and life, and they are constantly guiding me in the Nimbus. Thus, Shinran Shoni revealed that those who passed away and still remain in this life are all enabled to live and coexist in the Namo Amida Buddha. Today's Eitaikyo service is 
one of the precious opportunities for us to awaken to the compassionate activities of our loved ones who became a Buddha. So let us realize the perfect guidance of the Buddha and our loved ones at each moment of our lives and rejoice ourselves in the name of Namo Amida as a true and real life. Thank you very much for listening. As I conclude my message, I'd like to once again share the saying of Shinran Shonin. So would you please join me in the show? The ocean of birth and death of painful existence has no bound. Only by the ship of Amida's universal bow can we, who have long been drowning, unfailingly be brought across Namo Amida Namandals, 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 Namandals.